enthalpy is the amount of heat trapped within a substance. It cannot be measured directly, and so it's got to be measured when the substance reacts with another substance. It's going to be represented by a capital H. The heat of formation is the energy absorbed or released when a substance is formed from its elements. It's also referred to as the enthalpy of formation. And it's represented by HF, H for enthalpy, F for formation. And we can find these values on a table, and that table is located in the back of your notes. It looks like this. You'd find the compound that you want, and then you'd look at the delta H column. We won't be using the delta G or delta S. If negative, then energy is released when that substance is formed, or exothermic. If it's positive, then energy needs to be absorbed for that substance to be made, so it's endothermic. So negative delta H is exo, positive delta H is endo. The more negative the heat of formation, the more stable the substance is at room temperature. All free elements have a delta H value of zero kilojoules per mole because it doesn't take any energy to form an element because they're already like that in their elemental form. It doesn't matter if it's diatomic or by itself. So look at your note packet and figure out which of those is more stable. So the first thing we gotta do is find those compounds on our sheet. So we find CO2 and locate its value. And it's negative 393.5. Then we find carbon monoxide, which is right above that. carbon monoxide is negative 110.5. So the more stable is the one that's more negative. So out of those two, carbon dioxide is more stable. Now find the values of the next two on your paper and restart the iPod when you've done so. Aluminum oxide was negative 1675.7 and barium sulfate negative 1473.2. So aluminum oxide is more stable. Be careful when you're looking at compounds that you get the right form. This one's liquid water, which was negative 285.8, and gaseous water, which was negative 241.8. So liquid water is more stable than gaseous water at room temperature. You can also use those enthalpy of formation values to calculate how much energy is absorbed or released in a chemical reaction. So the delta H of reaction is equal to the sum of the delta H of formation products minus the sum of the delta H formation reactants. When you're solving this equation, you have to multiply by the coefficients of each compound, which you'll see in a second. If it's negative, it's exothermic, positive endothermic. Because we're gonna multiply by the coefficients, we need a balanced equation. So pause the iPod and balance that. You should have got one, two, one, two. So it says, what's the change in enthalpy for our reaction? So we're gonna look at our chart and find the delta H of formations for each of those compounds. Doing so, you should get those values. So delta H is equal to products, 
So 1 CO2 times negative 393.5 plus 2 waters times the water delta H, which was negative 285.8. And all of that is minus our reactants. And I'm going to add the 2 times 0, even though technically that's still 0, just so you can see that if it wasn't 0, that we would have to multiply it. And we get negative 890.3 kilojoules per mole. So this reaction must be exothermic, and we know that because delta H is negative. Go ahead and pause the iPod and try this one on your own. Restart it when you think you have it. Balancing, you get 312. You should have looked on your chart and found your values. So 0, 0, and 46.1, and that's a negative. Make sure you do products minus reactants. That's the biggest thing that people mess up on. That and not multiplying by the coefficients. Solving, you should have got negative 92.2 kilojoules per mole. And again, this reaction must be exothermic because delta H is negative. Go ahead and pause the iPod and try this one on your own. Restart when you think you have it. All right, they already gave us our delta H of formations, so we just need to plug it in. And all our coefficients are one, so it's literally products minus reactants. And it may help if you're missing these to simplify. So I have negative 1219 minus the sum of that, which was negative 975.5, and then solve. And we get negative 243.5 kilojoules per mole.